Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It's me, your girl. Please subscribe, join the family. Also click the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload because I get these comments a lot like, I didn't even know you uploaded. Well, click the bell then. Also subscribe to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. It is another video. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about the latest books that I've just read and I read these books in a span of maybe two months or so. Uh, one copy I do not have here with me, so I will, let me just hide these because then they ain't gonna see the books and then you're gonna scroll out and all of that. Um, one of the copies I uh, borrowed a good friend of mine, so that one's gone, but I'm gonna talk to you about that book as well today. So if for the book lovers, for the book lovers, definitely stick around, let's chill. Let's vibe, let's have a good time, and let's talk about some books. Okay? Okay. Right, before we do that, I'm just going to have a sip on that. Because I'm hungry, and I just got back from the gym, and I wanted to make myself a quick smoothie before we get started. Okay. So in no order of how I read them, I don't quite remember which came first or whatever. I'd have to check my Goodreads for that, and my phone is off, so... I'm going to talk to you guys about what I read. The first book I'm going to put here. This is The Push and it is by Ashley Audrain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you'll see it up here. This book was a thriller, like a suburbia kind of thriller, which follows the life of Blythe. And Blythe... <laughs> It's a really great book for the moms and I feel like I reviewed this book in one of my vlogs so definitely watch my vlogs as well because that's where I talk about the books as I read them so my memory of the books are really fresh so definitely watch my vlogs for that but this book uh, follows the Blythe, uh, the Blythe, the life of Blythe who uh, falls in love with her high school sweetheart, I believe his name is Fox, and they fall in love, they, you know, work and get new jobs and all of that, and she then has her first child. And when she has her first child, she realizes that this kid doesn't like me. Like, she really has a very tumultuous relationship with the child. The kid seems to take more of a liking or more of an understanding to her father as opposed to the mother. And, of course, Blythe goes through uh, the motions of actually struggling to connect with her child, wondering why, if she's the problem, if she isn't the problem, what's going on. But she actually firmly believes that there's something wrong with her child, like there's something evil with her child. It's really, really, I mean, personally, I also feel like there's something really, really off about that kid. Um, but the kid does a lot of things. Things happen in the book, really, really difficult things to read, especially when it comes to a really small young child. Um, but it's a great book and I really, really enjoyed it. I don't even remember how much I rated this book. I'm pretty sure I rated it the four out of five maybe a three and a half out of five. It's on my Goodreads, I don't remember, but I really, really, really enjoyed this book um, because it just really gave light to the struggles of motherhood sometimes and um, the postnatal depression and having a relationship with your child and feeling like you're not connecting with your child as a mother. It was really, really interesting for me to read, even though I don't have a child, but I found the book quite easy to get through. Short book, it was around 300 and something pages. Um, I read it in the span of like two or three days and I got through it really quickly. Easy to read, you fly right through it. And um, yeah, the topics, the contents there are rather, rather, rather heavy topics, but they're really, really good ones as well. I really enjoyed that book, and yeah, that's The Push by Ashley Audrain. And then the next book I read, and I'm pretty sure I was reading um, The Push alongside this one. This is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Now, I typically don't read horror novels. This is a horror novel. Um, I don't read horror novels, but I was really keen to read this one because I heard it being spoken about all over the show, and I really wanted to try it out. Loved this book. Again, also gave this one a four out of five. I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the whole premise of the novel. Um, this follows the life of four friends. 
I think yes for friends I read this one a while ago as well so bear with me but I also did review this one in one of my vlogs as well um, this follows the life of four friends who grew up on an Indian reservation and Native American Indians and what happens is they go hunting while they were younger and kill an elk but they kill this elk in a area that is reserved and not allowed for hunting. It's reserved for the elder um, members of that community and it is not allowed for hunting. So what happens is, what had happened was, 10 years later, things start happening to these four young men and really, really freaky, freaky deaky shit, okay? Like really scary stuff starts happening and they all start kind of dying off. I don't know if that's a spoiler, but really strange things start happening to them and it was really, really interesting to read. This is very literary, like the writing on here, I had to read some uh, phrases, paragraphs more than once because it's not the easiest, but it's really beautifully written, but it's not the easiest to read. Um, some books are really easy and quick to get through. This one took me some time because uh, Stephen Graham Jones writing is it's like a one. It's really, really good writing. And also there were some references to basketball in this uh, book, which for me, basketball is not really a thing much in this country. Uh, but I do know that in uh, the US, it is quite a big fundamental part of the sporting industry. However, there were some um, comments that were made about basketball here and there. I couldn't really relate to that much, but I enjoyed the book and I enjoyed seeing what happened and I enjoyed the intense twist that happens, I think maybe about two thirds of the way in. It, it's a really good book. So if you're somebody who wants to dive into horror, it's great. It's not really, uh, but there are some gory, gory scenes where, yeah, you read some really, really difficult things. Uh, trigger warnings for um, if you're somebody who doesn't want to read about um, animals, like being killed or dying, or um, there's a really graphic scene where one of the characters, his dog, was killed, and it was it was really hard to read. So if you're not somebody who's about that, don't read this book, okay? Don't read the book, but a really good book. And I'm pretty sure I gave it three out of five, four out of five, somewhere there, but I really enjoyed it. Then after that, I read for the Brown Skin Reads Book Club, I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This was a very enjoyable book. I loved it. I think I actually really got lucky when I was reading this time around because all the books that I read are clean four out of fives or five out of fives. So I got really, really lucky this time around. This book follows the life of Kaya and it's almost like a uh, coming of age kind of story or where you, you sort of watch Kaya grow. And it essentially starts as, uh, Ka it starts with Kaya being seven years old and it follows her life where pretty much her parents, her whole family leaves her and she's forced to grow up by herself. And she lives in the marshlands of this um, town called Barclay Clove, but she lives a little bit of a distance away. So the community of Barclay Clove Cove know who she is, but they just refer to her as the marsh girl, like this weird girl who doesn't live life like they do but she learns how to sustain herself and she learns how to look after herself and uh she grows this is more of like a cozy mystery i really wouldn't call it a thriller um but the book takes narrative in two time spans where uh we're watching her grow and then we're watching um how a story unfolds a few years later where a murder has just happened and Kaya is associated with this murder. Not only that, there are romantic elements to this um, book as well where Kaya develops a romantic interest with some boys in the book. Um, but it's a really, really enjoyable read. Also magnificently written. I felt like this book was written very well. Uh, as opposed to this one, also written very well, but not too easy to uh, read through. However, this one, it flows. It just, 
it's very symbolic in its writing i love how descriptive it is uh the character descriptions of this book is really really are really good as well and also she describes animals and delia owens describes animals and she describes the forest or the marshlands where kaya lives so exceptionally well you actually frame the image in your mind as you're reading it i really enjoyed that part of the book uh, also just the character descriptions and how it gets into thorough detail about each character i really liked that as well so a really good book if you're somebody who is into just something more of a slower pace you like thrillers but you like something that's more mystery slower pace this is a really good read a great fiction book and it was Delia Owen's first debut novel, so I was quite impressed with this. Loved it. Really, really did. I meh. I did. I did. Let me let me just hang on two seconds. Shortly after that, I then read His Only Wife. And this is by Peace Adzo Medi. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but she is a Ghanaian author. And this story was <laughs> quite enjoyable to read an interesting novel that follows the life of afi afi i think it is i read these books quite a while ago so uh this follows the life of afi yes afi who the novel essentially opens on afi's wedding day and she is getting married to a young man from a very wealthy family very affluent family Whereas Afi, on the other hand, is from a more um, rural background, rural and poor background. And she's getting married to this young man, but in absentia. So basically, the husband is not there for the wedding. Um, and this wedding was arranged for Afi and Elikem, the husband, uh, by the mother, by Elikem's mother. So there is something that Elikem's mother and Afi's mother were in cahoots with and they arranged this marriage i'm not gonna say why they did it because i feel like that is going to be a spoiler however the book navigates afi's life the decisions that have been made uh that led to this point and further it it follows her life but also the decisions that she make she makes when it comes to uh, financial security for her family, when it comes to navigating the relationship that uh, Ellie Kim has with his family, also the relationship that she has with Ellie Kim's mother, the dynamics of all the people that are involved. A really, really great, great book. I enjoyed it. And also a debut novel by Peace Ado Adzo Medi, but very well written. Um, quite enjoyable was through this like two days character descriptions very very good uh but also i just i was so intertwined in the story because i'm trying to understand how a man does not go to his own wedding but now is marrying this woman and it's like an arranged marriage by her mother by his mother and her mother and yeah that kept me enthralled and um Lots of people involved in this book, and I really feel like if it's something that is appealing to you, definitely give it a read. Give it a read. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Shop Objects. This is Shop Objects by Gillian Flynn. Again, another debut novel by an author. This was released years ago. This was her first novel, and Shop Objects also has a... Come on, come on. Let's see. When was this released? 2010 reissued in 2010 first published in 2006 so this was gillian flynn's first novel and gillian flynn is the author behind gone girl i'm pretty sure if you haven't heard of gone girl you've heard of it i'm pretty sure you've heard of it or you've seen the movie and not read the book but this was her first debut novel and this follows the life of camille preacher and camille preacher is a journalist who works for a small a publication house a newspaper house in chicago and it follows the life of camille going back to her hometown based on an assignment that she has been given by her boss so a murder has happened in her hometown of wind gap and her boss says listen we need to jump on the story and because you grew up there i think it's a good idea that you go there yeah. so when she goes back to this town 
to her hometown it kind of opens up old wounds about her history her past while she follows and tries to discover who is behind this murder and what is going on this book has thousands of trigger warnings i am talking about so many if you are triggered by substance abuse if you're triggered by alcoholism if you are triggered by abuse sexual abuse if you are triggered by um cutting any form of abuse of you know physical abuse as well if you are triggered by unhealthy mother-daughter relationships traumatic relationships between mothers and daughters I don't suggest you read this book also very very creepy details and of course because a murder has happened um, there's a serial killer on the loose what's going on um, yeah really really difficult topics really really difficult subjects in this book however it is a phenomenal thriller this was my first five out of five this time around I loved this book so much that I also read this book, I think, within the span of four days or something. Um, very, very, uh, the character description is really, really enjoyable as well. I didn't know at some point whether I liked Camille Preacher or not, the protagonist of the story, because I just felt like she also puts herself in situations that any normal person wouldn't. But then I come back and I think, but she's not normal, you know? She, she's she's got a really really uh dark history and a dark past however i really enjoyed this book and i highly recommend that you read it if you're somebody who loves thrillers um the twists in this book sick sick that's all i'm saying the twist in this book i did not see that final twist coming but really really nice book and for somebody like me who loves to watch channels like crime investigation where a murder is being investigated and solved and all of that and i love to watch anything about serial killers i love to watch anything with regards to all of that i loved this one so great book shop objects gillian flynn check it out and then the last book that i read that uh concludes this video or this wrap up is the polygamist by su nyati now spoke about this again in my last vlog i think i speak about the polygamist so i really do suggest that uh one you follow the channel but if you like the book content you watch my vlogs as well because half the time when i'm vlogging i'm reading a book in that time and i start talking about that book then and i give more detail in the vlogs than i do here because i can't give much detail about a book that i read two or three months ago however in the vlog i'm actually reading it in the moment so much more detail this is one of the best books this is another five out of five um i read a family affair by sunyati uh sometime last year that was my first novel by sunyati that i read even though that's her latest novel and this was her first this was her debut novel and wow wow um especially if you're familiar with polygamy and polygamists and what happens and what it's all about you can imagine the spice and the entertainment that is jam-packed into a book that is only 195 or so pages uh this follows the life of a multi-million is he a billionaire or is he a millionaire he's a something your name okay and basically it follows the life of jonasi who is a big hotshot powerful banking tycoon so he owns a lot of banks and all of that and he's wealthy and jonasi is also a polygamist and wow he's a polygamist but wow so it follows the life of him and his the four women that are attached to him joyce is the first wife matipa is the third wife essie is the second wife who no one really knows anything about and then he's got like a like a side like a side dish like another woman who is attached to them so basically this follows the life of all these characters and how it unfolds how they find out about one another how 
um Jonasi has been living his life and what he does and because he's such a powerful man you know powerful and rich men often get a, away with a lot of things and uh, look polygamy is something that we are all familiar with especially in the african continent we are familiar with it however it's how this man here lived his life that makes for a great entertaining book this book was hilarious at some point i threw the book across the room because i was so upset at jonasi and his foul behavior and um i felt sad again for some of the characters some of the wives that are connected to uh, jonasi here some of them i didn't like them it was just so entertaining and i read it in pretty much a day like i started it one morning and then i ended it and i had to stop and then i ended it in the afternoon kind of setup loved it loved it so so much i highly recommend that you try out this book it will be worth it it'll definitely be worth it um there are also again some trigger warnings here of rape and um abuse yeah there's a there was a really difficult scene uh in this book where i read of you know someone abusing someone else and physically so it was really really difficult to read so there's certain topics that are in here that are hard to read um and if you're somebody who does not like that you don't want to be triggered in that way then definitely maybe not pick it up but when i tell you out of all these books this was the most entertaining one absolutely loved it there's no other way there's no other two words about it okay honey i loved this book and i highly recommend it if you want to check it out pretty much that's it i read six books in maybe two months or so two three months or so uh which is quite good i am currently on goodreads my my book reading goal i think is 37 or 39 books i don't know how i got to those numbers uh but i've currently read 12 books so that's good in this year alone currently read 12 or 13 books so that's good and this month if you want to see what i'm gonna be reading watch my vlogs definitely do subscribe to the channel and watch the content because often a lot of the time i am going to be talking about what i am reading in my daily vlogs or my weekly vlogs so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i am gonna go got another video to film i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did subscribe join the channel, join the family. We want to get to 20,000 subscribers before my birthday, which is in June, so that I can do an insane, hectic, beautiful giveaway uh, for you guys. Definitely do subscribe. Don't be a silent watcher and one who hasn't subscribed because I know when I look at my stats that there are a lot of you. So definitely do subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Sayonara. Bye.